Good morning and welcome to Notterdew Community Church. My name is Nicola, I'm the pastor here at KCC and we'd like to extend a warm welcome to all of you, especially if you're visiting us for the first time. Now this week we're going to continue our series all about people who met Jesus. And this week we're looking at a man in the Bible called Nicodemus and what happened when he had a personal encounter with Jesus. I'm reading from the New Living Translation and we'll start at John chapter 3 verse 3. Now there was a Pharisee, a man named Nicodemus, who was a member of the Jewish ruling council. He came to Jesus at night and said, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God. For no one can perform the signs you are doing if God were not with him. Jesus replied, very truly I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God unless they are born again. How can someone be born when they are old? Nicodemus asked. Surely they cannot enter a second time into their mother's womb to be born. Jesus answered, very truly I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God unless they are born of water and the spirit. Flesh give birth to flesh, but the spirit gives birth to the spirit. You should not be surprised at my saying, you must be born again. The wind blows wherever it pleases. You hear its sound, but you cannot tell where it comes from or where it is going. So it is with everyone born of the spirit. How can this be? Nicodemus asked. You are Israel's teacher, said Jesus, and you do not understand these things. Very truly, I tell you. We speak of what we know and we testify to what we have seen, but still you people do not accept our testimony. I have spoken to you of earthly things and you do not believe. How then will you believe if I speak of heavenly things? No one has ever gone into heaven except the one who came from heaven, the Son of Man. Just as Moses lifted up the snake in the wilderness, so the Son of Man must be lifted up that everyone who believes may have eternal life in him. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. Whoever believes in him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe stands condemned already because they have not believed in the name of God's one and only son. This is the verdict. Light has come into the world, but people love darkness instead of light because their deeds were evil. Everyone who does evil hates the light and will not come into the light for fear that their deeds will be exposed. But whoever lives by the truth comes into the light so that it may be seen plainly that what they have done has been done in the sight of God. Now let's take a little look of the character of Nicodemus and who he was. Now Nicodemus was a Pharisee. This meant that he was very legalistic and he was part of a very exclusivist group um, who strictly kept the law of Moses and also the unwritten traditions of the elders. Now they had specific um, beliefs surrounding the importance of oral tradition, not just what was written in the Torah. The Pharisees believed that this oral tradition was handed down directly from God to Moses. And they believed that without the oral tradition, the Jewish people were missing key instructions on how to follow the Torah and therefore how to obey God. They were also a political group who attempted to influence government leaders and stir up the people to carry out their political agenda. This was tied to their desire to preserve Judaism and the identity of God's people. And they were also a social movement. They sought to change the way that Jews lived their everyday lives. They sought to, to help them to live the way that they believed God had asked them to be lived. The Pharisees also constantly tested Jesus in the New Testament. They tried to trap him in a blasphemous statement or something that um, 
could be seen as or interpreted as a threat against Rome. But as Jesus accumulated followers and those followers began embracing Jesus's um, interpretation of the law, it presented a greater and greater threat to the true Judaism that the Pharisees um, followed and wanted the Jews to follow. The Pharisees were trying to point people back to God, but in doing so, they missed Jesus. Now, Nicodemus was a Pharisee and he was wealthy and he was an older man. He was a learned man, so he was a very intelligent man and one of good standing within the community and would have been seen as an important person within the community. And this is the Nicodemus that sought out Jesus. So what happened when Nicodemus met Jesus? Now, it says that Nicodemus sought Jesus out at night. Why could this be? Well, the Bible doesn't really say why this is, but there are many um, different reasons why people think that this um, could have happened. Maybe it could be that he didn't want to be seen. He wanted to have a private conversation with Jesus and not be seen by the Pharisees um, and wanted um, a a time together where he wouldn't be interrupted you know during the day Jesus was followed by many many people by big crowds and Nicodemus wouldn't have had his questions answered maybe in the way that he wanted if he didn't have a one-to-one -one conversation with Jesus or maybe it was due to the fact that he had a lot of commitments during the day and he wasn't available until the evening the Bible doesn't say why but Nicodemus went in the evening to see Jesus. Nicodemus had a personal encounter with Jesus. He met him one on one. And he called Jesus Rabbi. He recognised him as a teacher, as a teacher sent by God. You know, he, he recognised him as a sent, uh, sent by God to teach mainly because of the miraculous signs that accompanied his ministry and his teaching. Nobody else could perform the miracles that Jesus was performing. And so when they said that, you know, we understand that you're a teacher, he was saying that people are looking at you and they know that you are sent by God because of the miraculous signs that are following your teaching. You know, he was seeking Jesus. He was seeking Jesus' teaching for himself. He was seeing what was happening. He was listening to the teaching, but he wasn't quite connecting. He wasn't quite understanding because what Jesus was teaching wasn't what he was teaching. What Jesus was teaching wasn't what he understood from the Torah or from the oral traditions that were passed down. Nicodemus wanted to know more. He wanted to understand more. But when Jesus started talking and explaining, Nicodemus still didn't understand what Jesus was saying. Jesus said to him, I tell you the truth, unless you are born again, you cannot see the kingdom of God. Now, Nicodemus took this literally. How can an old man go back into his mother's womb and be born again? He was thinking about himself. How can I do that? How can this old man here go back into his mother's womb and be reborn? But, you know, Jesus explained the scriptures to him and brought a new light onto what he already knew. You know, Jesus was explaining that it was not a physical thing. It wasn't a physical rebirth. Nicodemus still didn't quite get it. So Jesus highlighted to Nicodemus saying that Nicodemus you're a teacher you're somebody who explains the scriptures to others you're the one that explains the Torah and these teachings to others how can you not understand them yourself but Nicodemus even though he knew the, t the, the scriptures and he taught them and he explained them to others he didn't fully understand he didn't have that heart knowledge he hadn't got that revelation 
of what the scripture meant until he met Jesus. And Jesus revealed it to him. Now, the way that Jesus um, spoke to Nicodemus is, is very much like he spoke to a lot of people in the Bible. He started where Nicodemus was at. Last week, we looked at the woman at the well, the Samaritan woman at the well. And Jesus started the conversation with this woman all about her history and where she was and the reason why she was at the well at the midday because of the situation and the way that she was living her life and the way that the community had ostracized her because of the way she was living. Jesus came and spoke to her where she could understand. And he did the same for Nicodemus. Nicodemus was a scholar of the, of the Torah and he knew all about Moses. And so Jesus started to explain, coming from the, a, a point in history that Nicodemus would have known about. He used the scripture relating to Moses and he compared it to himself. He revealed himself to Nicodemus through Nicodemus's own knowledge and where he was at. And this is so important. You know, it's when we're teaching young children in Sunday school or when we have young children at home, we teach them at their level through what they have already experienced. If we try and teach them things and talk to them and explain things through um, concepts that they've not yet learned, then it's very difficult for them to understand. So you have to really bring it down to their own level. And that was the same as Nicodemus. Jesus was saying, how can you understand heavenly things? You can't understand things on the earthly perspective. So how can you understand heavenly things? And he started to teach him from his own knowledge. So Jesus used the example of Moses that, Nicode um, that Nicodemus would have understood. And he used this scripture from Numbers 21 verses 4 to 9. He said, they travel from Mount Hor along the route to the Red Sea. To, um, to go around Edom. But the people grew impatient on the way. They spoke against God and against Moses and said, why do you, have you brought us up out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? There's no bread, there's no water, and we detest this miserable food. Then the Lord sent venomous snakes among them. They bit the people and many Israelites died. The people came to Moses and said, we sinned when we spoke against the Lord and against you. Pray that the Lord will take the snakes away from us. So Moses prayed for the people. The Lord said to Moses, make a snake and put it on a pole. Anyone who is bitten can look at it and live. So Moses made a bronze snake and put it on a pole. Then when anyone was bitten by a snake and looked at the bronze snake, they lived. You know, when the people looked at this bron the bronze snake um, that Moses raised upon the pole, after they'd bitten by a snake, they were saved and they didn't die. And Jesus was explaining to Nicodemus that the same would happen to him. That he himself would be lifted up and those that looked to him would be saved. Would have eternal life with God. And he came out with that scripture that most of us all know. For God so loved the world that he gave his only, his one and only son, that whosoever believes in him will not perish, but have eternal life. Jesus spoke about uh, using knowledge about the law, using the knowledge about the story of Moses. But he explained, he used that to explain what would happen to him. You know, Nicodemus wanted to know the truth and Jesus spoke to him in a way that he would understand. Jesus met Nicodemus where he was. Jesus knew what he needed to say and how he needed to explain it to Nicodemus so that he understood about eternal life. Jesus revealed himself as the fulfillment of the scriptures of the Torah and he explained salvation and eternity and how Nicodemus um, could get eternal life. How Nicodemus could get that salvation. And how Jesus, he himself, was the fulfillment of those scriptures. 
He said you had to be born again or born from above. The Greek can also mean um, born from above, but both meanings are consistent with Jesus as redeeming work. You know, Nicodemus knew a lot about God, but he didn't know God. Nicodemus had a lot of head knowledge, but he didn't see or fully understand until Jesus revealed it to him. He knew who Jesus was, but he didn't know who he was as in the son of God. And what Jesus did, he brought that understanding. It brought that understanding from his head knowledge into his heart. And sometimes that can be the same with us. We can know a lot about Jesus, but not understand who he really is. Not know him personally, not understand that he came for each and every one of us. You know, this revelation changed Nicodemus's life and the way he understood the scriptures. And this revelation can change our life too. We too can have that same experience. We need to ask God to bring a revelation, ask the Holy Spirit to reveal God to us, to reveal Jesus to us and to give us that full understanding of who he is. Maybe you today, you know a lot about God. Maybe you spent a lot of time in church. Maybe you've read your Bible each and every day. Maybe you pray every day, but actually you don't know God personally. Well, today can be that day when you have that encounter, when you have that personal meeting with Jesus, when you're born of the spirit. Look up to Jesus, look to Jesus and be assured of your eternal life. You know, there were two other times in the Bible when Nicodemus was mentioned. And we understand from these two other times that this encounter, this first encounter with Jesus had an impact on Nicodemus. That when he had this conversation with Jesus, he actually understood what Jesus was saying. And he became a follower of Jesus. We look at John 7, it says, when the crowds heard him say this, some of them declared, surely this man is the prophet we've been expecting. Others said, he is the Messiah. Still others said, but he can't be. Will the Messiah come out of Galilee? For the scriptures clearly state that the Messiah will be born of the royal line of David in Bethlehem, the village where the King David was born. So the crowd was divided about him. Some even wanted him arrested, but no one laid a hand on him. When the temple guards returned without having arrested Jesus, the leading priests and Pharisees demanded, why didn't you bring him in? We've never heard anyone speak like this, the guards responded. Have you been led astray too? The Pharisees mocked. Is there a single one of us rulers or Pharisees who believes him? This foolish crowd follows him, but they are ignorant of the law. God's curse is on them. Then Nicodemus the leader who had met Jesus earlier spoke up. Is it legal to convict a man before he is given a hearing? He asked. They replied, are you from Galilee too? Search the scriptures and see for yourself. No prophet ever comes from Gal Galilee. You know, there's a difference here. He no longer came at night. Nicodemus stood up for Jesus when the Pharisees wanted to arrest him, when they were questioning the guards as if to say, why on earth didn't you arrest him? Nicodemus stood up and said, is it legal to convict a man before he is given a hearing? He tried to protect Jesus. He tried to stop the Pharisees from arresting him. He did what he could in the situation that he was in to defend Jesus when the Pharisees wanted to have him arrested. He stood up for him in front of the other Pharisees. But just note, even though Nicodemus believed in Jesus, he didn't stop being a Pharisee. He stayed within that group. And he was a follower of Jesus where he was. And, you know, he was a follower of Jesus, even where declaring it publicly was difficult for him and it would poss possibly cause a lot of um, issues going forward 
but he was prepared to stand up for Jesus where he was. You know, sometimes there are places in the world where there is persecution, where people will follow Jesus, maybe secretly, people will follow Jesus for fear of their life. If they were to speak out and maybe they will only let a certain few people know and they would worship together like the underground church in China. This is what Nicodemus was doing. He was a follower of Jesus, but he still came under the, um, the group of the Pharisees and he was still part of that group. You know, when I was a missionary um, in Sierra Leone, I remember speaking to a lady and sharing about Jesus with her. I was visiting her. She'd just lost her sister and she was part of the community where I lived. So um, I'd been traveling out of the area. When I came back, I went and sat just on a log outside her house and in my broken Creole and her broken Creole, we were able to, um, to understand each other and chat to each other. Her sister had died after a long sickness. And as we spoke, she'd, she'd heard me speak about Jesus before and, and, and we'd built up um, a relationship um, over, the, over the few weeks and months that I was there. And during this conversation, she said she wanted to believe in Jesus, but how could she believe? As she was the leader um, of the women of another faith in that town and that she would be ostracized. She didn't know the reaction of the other women of the other faith, how, how they would react to her um, becoming a follower of Christ and becoming a Christian. It would have been very difficult for her to be accepted. It would be very difficult for her to reveal that it, her safety would be um, compromised at that time. And we spoke more about this. And she decided to put her faith in Jesus and look to him and believe in him and become a follower of Jesus. And I explained to her that she would know the time when it was right for her to reveal that she was a follower of Jesus. And she didn't have to reveal that to everybody at that time, but just to certain people who she felt safe and confident to reveal that to. And sometimes, you know, we it, it, we want to shout about it, but in other times, it, such as that, that would have been a cause for safety and concern for her. And I said, just be in relationship with Jesus, follow him, get close to him, and he will show you the right time to reveal that to others, just like the case of Nicodemus. You know, Nicodemus raised his voice on behalf of Jesus Christ. As the Sihandrin and the Pharisees, they devised measures against him. Nicodemus had grown bold enough to publicly reveal how he now believed. Another time Nicodemus is mentioned is at the time of the burial of Jesus, when Nicodemus honoured Jesus. And this is in John chapter 19. It's sat in at 38. It says, afterwards, Joseph of Arimathea, who had been a secret disciple of Jesus because he feared the Jewish leaders, asked Pilate for permission to take down Jesus's body. When Pilate gave permission, Joseph came and took the body away. With him came Nicodemus, the man who had come to Jesus at night. He brought about 75 pounds of perfumed ointment made from myrrh and aloes. Following Jewish burial customs, they wrapped Jesus's body with the spices in long sheets of linen cloth. The place of crucifixion was, a gar was near a garden where there was a tomb never used before. And so because it was the day of preparation for the Jewish Passover, and since the tomb was close at hand, they laid Jesus there. Now there's a significance in this. If you think that um, Joseph of Arimathea was a secret follower of Christ because he feared the Jewish, the Pharisees and the Jewish rulers. But look who came to help him. Look who came along with him to help bury Jesus, Nicodemus. He was one of those Pharisees, those Jewish leaders that Joseph feared. But they would have known that they were each a follower of Christ. So they were secret followers 
Um, but other people knew that they were followers of Christ and they would have followed Christ and shared things together. You know, the, another part of this significance is this took place just after Jesus had been lifted up onto the cross. And this allowed Nicodemus to see that fulfillment of that prophecy made by Jesus, where he would be lifted up as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness. So the son of man, Jesus would be lifted up on the cross and that whosoever looks at him will be saved. Nicodemus honoured Jesus with Joseph. And they came in an act of, of honour and a, an act of, of worship um, and devotion to Jesus. When they came and they covered him with expensive aloes and expensive perfumes. And, and they, they wrapped his body and gave him a proper Jewish burial. So this encounter with Jesus brought a new revelation to Nicodemus. Even though he thought he knew the scriptures, he missed Jesus. The same happens today. People can know the Bible, attend church and pray and do all the right things, but not know Jesus personally, not have that spiritual rebirth, that head to heart knowledge. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, that whosoever, that means you, that means everyone, that means anyone who believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. Do you know Jesus? Are you assured of an eternity with God? Look to Jesus today, just as the people looked up to that bronze snake and they survived and they didn't die. Lift your eyes up to Jesus and believe in him and you will be you will have eternity with God. You know, this encounter with Jesus changed Nicodemus. He became a follower of Jesus. He lived his life where he was as a follower of Jesus. Are you following Jesus? Are you serving Jesus? Are you worshiping Jesus where you are, in your workplace, in your school, in your community? in your home? If not, then think of how you can serve God better. Maybe you can tell one person about Jesus this week. Maybe you can serve God in a way that you've never served him before. Maybe you can worship him more in song, in finances, in giving to others, in um, acts of service. All of that is worshipping Jesus when you do it with the right heart. You know, Jesus met Nicodemus where he was. And Jesus wants to meet you today where you are. Let us pray. Lord, we want to thank you that you love us says in that scripture that God so loved the world that he gave. We thank you, God, that you love us. And we thank you, God, that you gave, that you gave your one and only son so that we could spend an eternity with you, that we can be reconciled with almighty God. I pray, God, for anyone this morning who doesn't know you, who would like to know more about you. God, I pray that you would bring a revelation to them. Lord, that they would have that spiritual rebirth and that they would come to know you. Lord, I pray that you would give us boldness and confidence to live our lives for you in the everyday. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, it's great that you could join with us today. In 10 minutes time, we're going to have a coffee time. All the information of how to join us on Zoom um, is on the slide that we'll just follow. It would be wonderful to see you there. Um, and just to share a time um, together. Um, and we would love to see you again next week when we continue our series about when I met Jesus. Have a great week.